history of the hospital is that it's based in a lovely Georgian manor estate. The house is still here. The museum is one of the old lodge houses, and there were three lodge houses. This and another one still exist. It was bought by uh, the Corporation of Bristol, who in 1919 uh, paid £15,000 for the whole estate. Uh, it was 72 acres, I think, and all the houses. They paid another £2,500 for others, which I take to be trees, etc. And the house, the old manor house, was used as a children's tuberculosis sanatorium. Uh, and Bristol said at the beginning it wasn't going to be big enough, but the national government wouldn't pay for any more. But eventually Bristol got its way. And in the early 1930s, some purpose-built walls were opened, some of which are still there to this very day. Uh, and the house reverted to residential accommodation for the matron, senior nurses and the residential doctors. And it stayed like that until the late 1930s, when the government could see that the war was coming. Uh, so they looked around all over the country for sites to build emergency service hospitals, EMS office, officers, hospitals, and uh, here was 70 acres of parkland outside Bristol. They knew Bristol was going to be bombed, aircraft factories, docks, etc., etc., uh, and they had a fear that they wouldn't have enough hospital beds to house all the civilian casualties. So in the early 1940s, uh, a ramp of 15 wards was built uh, to serve this particular purpose. Uh, fortunately, the air raid casualties didn't come in the numbers that were feared, and the hospital was never used. The Americans came into the war, they were looking for hospital facilities, so they were given this empty 15 warded hospital as a form of reverse lease lend. It wasn't big enough for them, uh, so they uh, caused it to be expanded for another 15 wards. So there were two ramps of wards. Incidentally, the Americans hardly laid a brick. The, uh, the hospital was not built by the Americans. It was used by the Americans. The only transport they had were bicycles, and the locals made a huge profit out of their bicycles. As soon as the first Americans came, they drug dragged all the old ones out, put a lick of paint on and sold them to the Americans, who then sold them to the next unit coming in. And there's one uh, record from one of the units to say, the next time we'll be wary of our so-called colleagues, because they were charged over the top for these bicycles. But well, one chap um, who had his bicycle chained outside a little, I think it's still there, a little brick block by the other entrance. It used to be the guard house. And, uh, he couldn't get at his bicycle, so he proceeded to shoot the chain off. Um, my name is Dot Sandiford. Um, at first I was a pre-nursing student for the first three months, and then from January 67 until January 1970 I was a student nurse. I just wanted to come here. I, I knew of the hospital, and I loved the grounds. I, I just wanted to come here for some reason. And did you live in a um, nurse's home here? I did. For the first year of my training, I did. But in those days, you weren't an adult <laughs> at, you know, at 18. So I had to, um, when we wanted to leave the nurse's home, because Matron wanted um, the rooms for new girls who were starting, we had to get our parents' permission if we could come back and live at home, because we weren't allowed to leave the hospital and go in and get a flat or something. You had to go back home. So, yeah. um, and what are some of your earliest memories of, of working here at French Um Well, earliest memories is being on Ward 3 as a pre-nursing student for three months. And I loved that time. I really learned a lot. I um, can't remember his sister's name. It's just gone from me. But... She was an excellent sister and she just wanted to help me to learn so much, even before I started my training. She would let me go to theatre and observe operations and she would demonstrate how to do injections and she really helped me, really helped me to have my love of nursing grow even before I started my training. So that was the memory of that sister. 
They had big French doors, uh, these wards, and they fronted onto a huge lawn and all the patients who could could go outside and parents used to bring picnics over a weekend and the children had a lawn to run around on, which was really nice for the younger children that they could get out in the fresh air. And also some of the older patients used to push their way across the lawn and then across the common to the pub. And some of the consultants used to say that that was the best form of therapy because somebody with an eye injury would be pushing the wheelchair and the other person in the wheelchair would be acting as the eyes, but they would get themselves across to the pub. Good afternoon, porters. My name's Jamie Milton. I'm a porter and supervisor at French Lake Hospital. Yeah, I've been here five years and my work has, when I originally started, I started off as a porter, which is generally patient movements, uh, clearing of linen, laundry, uh, delivering of meals, taking away of bloods, changing of oxygen cylinders. And then I got promoted about eight months ago to supervisor, which that entails delegating that work and also doing the rotas for the staff. You must know everybody. Yeah, yeah, I even met my, uh, my wife here. Can you tell yeah. us about that? Yeah, she's uh, a healthcare assistant, she works on 50, and uh, we started dating a couple of years back, and then we got married in February this year, so it's all been, so French has done a lot for me really, it's changed my life. How nice, and yeah. so how did you, when you, did you keep going up to the, find that you had to go up to her ward to get patients then, how did it happen? Well, I know, I, it was more through her mum, so her mum used to run the general office, and she, I used to, and her stepfather works here, and it was just like, I suppose it just happened, but it's all good. So do you think that, I mean, it's interesting that you said that there's a whole sort of, her whole family seemed to be involved in Frenchie. Do you think there's quite a lot of that, that people that have been here for years and... Yeah, yeah? yeah definitely. Because uh, one of the guys here, his wife works in CSSD, his sister works down in the uh, wages. Um, we've got another guy in here, his wife's a cleaner. And couple of guys, their wives and nurses, they've actually met in French as well, yeah, so that's, I think that does go on. It is very family, it is like a family, I suppose, yeah. I'm Barbara and I work in the coffee shop here for the WRBS, with the funds with which go to the hospital, you know, all the, uh, yeah. I think I've been here just about three, I'm in my third year, I think, might be four flies by, doesn't it? I just come one day a week in the afternoon on a Friday. Yeah. And what do you like about working here, Barbara? Friendliness, I think, yeah, to, to get to chat to the people when they come in. They all mostly come in for a cup of tea before the visiting start, especially people who come from far away. And then you do hear from, some of them just like to talk sometimes, you know, you can tell. It's they're on their own sometimes. Can you tell me a little bit, we've just been talking to people about the actual site of French A and what a yes. funny place it is. I mean, yeah. what are your feelings about the actual actual site of French A Hospital? Well, I think it's very nice because you've got everything around, really. It is a shame, really, you know, because the surrounding area. It's pretty unique, isn't it? Oh, yes, certainly. And it's got, it goes back a long way as well.